Hey everybody, this is Jimmy Putnam, host of the Jimmy Curve Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, After we recorded today's episode, we all went to Shoot Your Mouth Off and met a pretty cool band that was the feature act that night called Faded Black, and they were nice enough to give me a track to play uh, on this episode. They are pretty sweet, so stick around at the end of the episode to check out Bring the Light by Faded Black. Uh, enjoy the episode. Thanks a lot. Hide all the insecurities. Welcome, 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 welcome. Hey, welcome to the Jimmy Curve. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. About to get bumpy. You guys keep derailing me. I did, and I did it endearingly. <laughs> Will's got jokes. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Will is the Sarlacc pit. I love beer. I like that too. Pork broccoli. Snowflake. Hail Baphomet. Thank you guys for listening. I learned a lot. Keep up the good work. Thank you for tuning in and listening to the Jimmy Curve Podcast. I'm your host, Jimmy Putnam. And with me, as always, are co-host Joshua Vossler. Hello, everybody. And career sidekick, Will Doherty. Can I can I give everybody a little peek behind the curtain here? I'm starting pull, off a little pull weird. The cur- pull the We're, curtains back. I'm going to pull the curtain back. I want all the listeners to know, you, you're listening to this episode. You just heard our fantastic intro song. I Correct. want you listeners to know. We all collectively listen to that at the start of every episode <laughs> during the recording. That's true. Because that's how Jimmy puts it in the podcast. I do that on purpose because I enjoy listening to it. <laughs> because my narcissism doesn't always shine through, but uh, when I've prepared when I've put a lot of work into something, I want to enjoy it. Like that that is a 30 second clip that I spent like 8 hours putting together. So I've got to listen to it about 500 more times to get my, my money back. No, we have to. I mean, it's just part of the show. <laughs> right. We have to do that. There's, and no, gets, there's gets, no reason that I make you guys listen to it. It gets me amped up yeah. for the show. So. <laughs> right. Awesome, awesome. Hey, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Thank you for leaving us uh, positive feedback on iTunes, and please continue to do so. If you have not left us a comment on iTunes, we would really appreciate it. It really helps out the show. Please leave us some positive feedback and click five stars. We really appreciate that so much. Uh, Subscribe to us on iTunes. Follow us on Stitcher. Tell a friend. And find us anywhere else you can find podcasts. SoundCloud. um, uh, The guy in the car stopped next to you at a stoplight with his window down who's listening to it. It, it, It's probably (laughs) us. That'll happen. Hey, you in the car next door, if you can hear my voice now, this is the Jimmy Curve Podcast. (laughs) Find us on Help! iTunes. Help! <laughs> He's <laughs> holding us here. <laughs> All right. Uh, and with that, that, I feel like that's a good transition into welcoming a guest. Hell right? yeah, like, it is. Like a hostage situation. <laughs> uh, with us this week, our very special guest, host of Shoot Your Mouth Off, the extremely funny and friendly Ben McFarland, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Hello, hello. Hey, 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 yeah. Oh, I like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we have we have a little welcome clapping for you. How you doing, Ben? Good. I I'm doing good. Ben, you host uh, Shoot Your Mouth Off, which is I don't even know how to describe it. What would you call it? Variety. Just a, it's like a variety open mic. Yeah, but just... we have a focus every week, a feature. And and what is that? Uh, it's a thirty to forty five minute set of whatever comedy, poetry, music, anything we decide to put out there. And how long have you been hosting this show? Um, I've hosted the Lincoln one. Uh, we did a couple weeks over at the Grove a couple years back, and then I've done it at Libations now for about, oh, that's a hard question. I would say multiple <laughs> weeks. Multiple. It's been like two months, three months at tops. But, but, but the show's <laughs> been in Omaha for quite a while. The show's right? been in Omaha for 11 years, and uh, I host off and on there, but yeah. I'm not I'm not the regular host. Jim and Mandy do that every week. Right on. How'd you get involved? Uh, just showing up every week, yeah. and I was one of the few comedians that really, really loved the whole scene as opposed to just the you know the comedy no it's like it's tricky because i've performed on shows specifically i did an improv show at uh, the pizza shop collective where we did long form improv but the first part of the night was poetry and that i don't know it was fun but the crowd didn't really know how to handle that transition and i think they weren't prepared for it Mm because it was like there were some people there to watch poetry and, like, they were literally, like, snapping and stuff after poems. And then when we 
came on and tried to do we're a much <laughs> drunker crowd an improv set they did, had no idea and then there was in, the improv crowd there who was like did not know what to, how to handle poetry so like yeah i guess my question is how do you get people there to pay attention to things that are outside of their bailiwick i think just the the aura of the show for so long has been everything and yeah. so people it, it's not unnatural to watch them one after the other right as opposed to other shows i feel like people aren't it's a hard pill to swallow if you don't know what you're getting yourself <laughs> into <laughs> you right. never know i will say i've been to a few of them you never know what you're gonna see and what i mean by that is last time I went, before I left, this older gal got on stage and attempted oh, comedy oh. and started crying. Now, <laughs> because it's a variety open mic, I, open mic, I almost thought maybe this was part of her performance, and it was, it was just some an kind artist. of an Andy Kaufman elaborate, or, or right. it just wasn't. It's she, it wasn't comedy just after all. Amphetamines, right? It wasn't comedy <laughs> after all. It was, uh, you know, it was something Myth, avant-garde, yeah. uh, some shit. No, she just broke down his comedy wasn't for her i don't think but <laughs> i haven't yeah. seen her since then, that so. sounds <laughs> amazing <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Say, I, yeah. oh my god you just described the one thing i would because i'm like i'm the guy that jimmy was talking about earlier who's like the comedian who can't handle the other stuff at the open mic because i don't know anything about music and so watching music is just boring to me because i have no ability to differentiate the difference between good music and bad music <laughs> it's it's all the same and the same with poetry like you said like there were people snapping it after poems like i it's inconceivable to me that someone could use snapping as an expression from a crowd that's not yeah we like, don't do that bitter sarcasm <laughs> <laughs> i said we're far too drunk for snapping and... that's good yeah but, but the music is rough <laughs> but going to that going to that environment going to that mic and seeing a person who's going to be telling the story of that happening at their AA meeting tomorrow <laughs> as them finally hitting rock bottom. That's what I want to see. <laughs> right. Do you prep the crowd to, you know, be forgiving? Or is yeah, it. I, I just... try to make sure everyone's pretty respectful. And at Libations, it's been pretty cool as yeah. far as, like, if they don't like your stuff, they just don't do anything. <laughs> right. <laughs> or they're just not digging it But at that moment. but Because, I mean, we do. A, I've done a lot of comedy open mics in general. And, I mean, those are no different. Those are the same. I mean, you get people you get some who, who go up on stage. And uh, I will try. admit, last time I went, that, that gal who tried uh, comedy, I felt like I was kind of mean. But I was laughing. <laughs> but it was blatant yeah. it was blatantly like kind of at her right which i was it was genuine it was kind of funny to watch a train wreck sometimes but then i just felt horrible when she started crying <laughs> i was like i gotta go oh. like, i shouldn't be here anymore yeah that just sounds sad well the, <laughs> see again and if it was me i would have just doubled down on the laughter <laughs> <laughs> it's see that we've always had a, a home on stage for some of the less the homeless if you will <laughs> the homeless we've <laughs> given a home right. for the homeless so sometimes the people that wouldn't make it anywhere else do like to come to our show cuz we're so nice to them <laughs> oh, well yeah. just to let you know uh it's... that's what happens if you, you you run the risk of being nice to the nerd in high school that he now <laughs> thinks you're friends that's the problem <laughs> that was my life too i i let will sit in on our first show and look what happened he kept coming back now he's just a cynical bastard. Well, I can't so. shake him. <laughs> you can't. You keep trying, though. <laughs> Sorry, Josh, I interrupted you. No, that, that lady, just to let you know, if she ever comes back and does the same thing, she was recording all the comic sets and then put them online. Yeah, that, she had told me after a hideout show. Well, not hideout. We're the lookout now. Right. But she had told us, she told me, uh, yeah, I just, I, I put you on this website. Yeah. Andrew, and I was put off. I didn't under, I didn't know she was doing that. Andrew Hannes told me that, and it kind of made me mad. Um, so wait, wait. So she's. This was not her only appearance at a shoot your mouth. Uh, that's her only one in Lincoln. Her she's been. her thing currently, in her own words, is broadcasting on the internet. So like she had like that's by, what we do right by the stage though. <laughs> This is voluntary. I think she had a YouTube though. video for years. She but had, apparently people <laughs> really. Liked, I, I bet she did. <laughs> I bet she did. YouTube channel. But she had uh, over by the stage was uh, like a full laptop plugged in, stuff plugged into it, like her phone on trying to prop, prop up towards the stage or whatever. And she was get making all. It was distracting. 
and I was going to make fun of her. And it was in front of that mirror. It was in front of the mirror, so you could see, like, <laughs> the screen on the other side of the mirror. And she would get up and walk around and make noise. I'm, I'm just like, who is this? And I asked around because I wanted to make fun of her. And uh, and I would ask around, and everybody's like, I don't know. I was like, cool, I'm going to make fun of her. And then, so the first thing I do is I start making fun of her, and it just got real sad real quick. And I just, like, gave up on it. Nobody thought it was funny. <laughs> yeah, she came up with us, like a group of us that came from Open I Hunt. figured and that she out said, later. Yeah, she, she even forced Sam to sit in the back seat. She was like, I have anxiety. I have too much anxiety to sit in the back seat. So, oh, so wow. crazy so, lady. Yeah. Right. So she she was getting actively weird well before. Well, she sounded shit faced. She's and she, she wasn't. talks like that, like she's just totally hammered. But she made a comment that she's been sober for years on stage. And oh, James, that, James Lindsay was sitting right ones. next to me. I was like, somebody call an ambulance. I think she's having a stroke. Then, because <laughs> like that's how <laughs> that's no. how slurred her speech is. Those are the saddest ones. Those are the people who stopped doing drugs years ago, but they've just fucking <laughs> Still fried high. their brains. <laughs> Still like, high. and they're just that way. Forever now. <laughs> ben, can you think of a, another story? We don't want to give out any names or hurt anybody's feelings, but in your time at the, the like running or being at these open stages, like what are some of the most bizarre things you've seen people try? And like other than, we've all seen bad stand up comedians, yeah. but like outside of that, like what's a weird story of someone? Like in during music or poetry or something. Oh, God, you can try like, to, to the, bring it down to one. Like, what's the <laughs> weirdest music thing you've ever or something like? I, we've had several drunken people do acapella pieces because they they've watched acoustic all night and they're like, "We can do it! I'm gonna sing a or a acapella." Like multiple people together. Sometimes, and it's awesome. like this is not karaoke. We don't have a screen for you. We don't have music for. And then they they're demanding the guitarists get on stage and play with them. I want I oh want to see god. freeform improv barbershop. <laughs> that is Oh my god, that is so hard to do well anyway. Oh, it's impossible. <laughs> and no, there is good barbershop. Oh, like, right, there's, right, right. there's impressive acapella. I thought you didn't know anything about music. But <laughs> You're right. Let's define right. acapella for well here. Uh that's what when you don't have your guitars or your drumsticks. Hey. hey. <laughs> <laughs> no but i mean but that's what i'm saying that's amazing because like drunk karaoke is already so terrible but, right to be able to take drunk karaoke and subtract the music you're <laughs> right. left with just the most beautiful pure form of failure <laughs> it's just like distilled can, can i tell you in my time as a professional karaoke dj which I used to be, Ben. Uh, uh, Jim, my other co-host, does that oh for my a living. God. Yeah. I mean, through college, like I'm 37 now, but from ages 22 to 24 as a professional karaoke DJ. But uh, that's actually a very short trip through college. Well, that was, uh, yeah, that was during and post college. But anyways, right. the main mistake, like the very most common mistake that people made at karaoke nights, and this happened every night that I worked, is people th would always think that it was the greatest idea to get really drunk and then put up, have their, like, put in a request for their friend of a song that he doesn't know, and they'll be like, yeah, go up there and sing this Whitney Houston song, and they'll be like, I don't know the words, and they'll be like, no, it'll be hilarious, man, it'll be super funny. For some reason, everyone always thinks that's going to be the most hilarious thing. It's never funny. It's never funny. It's just awkward. It's the worst thing because you get a drunk guy standing up there staring at a screen and he doesn't know where the words go. So he'll try to get the first two lines out and then he'll just be like, no, 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 no. And no one's laughing. Everyone's just like, get the fuck off the stage. Get to the next, like have somebody actually try this. And I think what that taught me very early on is that like that kind of joke doesn't work without sincerity. Like you have to be sincere for failure to be funny. Like, does that make sense? Are we using Will as a... No, I'm just... <laughs> I'm just Will happens to be sitting across from me, and most of what I talk about is failure. So a lot of time... I spend a lot of time on this podcast staring at Will and talking about failure. And just, just so that you comment. can't... No, yeah, I, I, I just want to explain to all the people, because this is since this isn't a video podcast, you should know. You can't see it. 
but I am wearing my Pizza Hut uniform <laughs> right now. <laughs> right. As Jimmy is looking me, making uncomfortable <laughs> eye contact and talking about failure. So, like, okay, so poetry. I, I, I've i been to, I took a lot of poetry classes in college. I was a creative writing major. I used to really write a ton of poetry. And I've come to the conclusion really fairly recently, like in the last five years, that I hate poetry. <laughs> and it's like, it's a thing that I've fought against for a long time. I've finally come to terms with the fact that just this year that I hate live theater. I always consider myself a cultured person. And I don't know if I'm a 21st century digital boy or what it is, but like... I think you're just getting old and kind of curmudgeon-y, like... See, I think I never enjoyed it. <laughs> I just made word? myself sit through it for a lot of, t- a lot of time. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. But yeah, old and curmudgeon is that's certainly true. Yeah, maybe a little bit. But like poetry is in that same boat where I I used to like convince myself that I liked it. (laughs) And it's only recently that I've been like, no, I don't need this. (laughs) You know what I feel like? I feel like part of it, uh, because I'm kind of I'm kind of in the same boat. I mean, I, I enjoy theater more a little bit more, but I'm kind of there with you on poetry. But I feel like. Part of the reason for that with, like, other live performance mm-hmm. types, because I because I watch comedy and I do comedy, and that's the thing that's so important to me. But I feel like when I watch music or poetry, it feels like cheating because when you're doing comedy, for that to be successful, you have to draw a visceral, like, guttural response from the audience. You right. have to get laughter out of someone's soul for that to be a successful performance and and like doing anything that's like poetry where you're expecting like any kind of drama feels like cheating because you don't everybody can just sit silently and then it can still be successful i'm like fuck you that's cheating (laughs) it's definitely like i've done all three at especially shoot your mouth off and comedy is by far the hardest one right right it's you you have to have a reaction throughout your set as opposed to just at the end or oh. you know like i've never even thought about that i mean that is true like cuz i played music for a long time i was in bands for a long time and it's true like if you get 2 seconds of applause in between songs that's fine yeah, like that's that, okay job done <laughs> if people only listen for 5 seconds during your song and they go that's impressive musicianship. <laughs> and then turn back to their conversation. You succeeded in your goal as a band. Well, the, yeah. other, the other part of it is that when you're playing music, you're not really aware of nearly, nearly to the extent as when doing comedy, or at least I wasn't. You're concentrating on each other on stage so much that it's really hard to pay. I mean, you can tell if like just no one's looking or paying attention, but if there are people in the room... You can't really tell to what extent people mm-hmm. are enjoying it. Poetry is that in-between one, between the two. Yeah. Like, I feel like you can do poetry, and you do have to be... It's it's a little more... It's a little harder to get them to pay attention to you with poetry than with yeah. music. And with music, you can get you can talk during the whole thing, and most... Right. Yeah, and it's it's okay. They're still jamming. They still like it. And one yeah. of the best open mics in Omaha is Alley Peelers at the Hive. But it's not... The best open mic for comedy or poetry, right? <laughs> but it's a, you. I love to watch it, but I go up there and I usually just talk with a room full of people talking. Now you, we, you've done, you've like written poetry and read it on stage. Oh yeah, yeah. I like slam poetry. Mine's very brutal. Can I? Can I ask this question? <laughs> this, I genuinely don't know the answer, and I'm not being condescending. What is slam poetry? What's the difference between? It's like a performance poetry. It's okay. you're getting. It's a, it's all about the performance, and when you do slam, it's three minutes long, and it's. You know, oh, there's like that's rules. A rule. It has to be th- oh, I didn't like know that. slam is a specific type of competitive poetry. Mm-hmm. It's oh. done as a specific kind of competition. Now it's then taken on kind of a broader definition of just mm-hmm. performance poetry, right? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. it started out as one specific like rule set type of competitive performance. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. I had no idea. Give me give me some more stories about things that shoot your mouth off that have gone strangely. If you've got think, anything in mind? I think this one just comes to mind is one of our, it was pretty close to our end at Shark Club in in Omaha, and this drunk guy who who I know he's a known like not a known comedian, but I think you guys probably even know who he is, and I don't know because he only came that one time mm-hmm. I think, but he got so drunk and all he did was tell Mandy how fat she was. <laughs> <laughs> and then all of the other women in the crowd, how fat they were, and how he wouldn't sleep with them. 
Jim K went down to the show. I don't know who this guy was, but we were just like floored. <laughs> like, did he really just go up here and just tell everyone? And he's like, it's okay for a guy to be fat. No, 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 no. That is so fu- See, I, I have seen comedians that I respect just get into a mood and try some of the weirdest shit. Like, I've seen local comedians that I know are funny and I know have bits that work that they've workshopped get on stage and just berate the crowd for eight minutes and leave to silence and it's i'm always like why (laughs) did you make that choice and i always ask myself that until i find myself on stage doing that same thing that just turned out to be one of my strong suits was berating the crowd. Oh, yeah. I didn't know oh, that really? I was good at it until oh. I started making fun of people, and they loved it. <laughs> and there has to be something so freeing about being able to tell women that they're fat without having any repercussions yeah. sexually. <laughs> yeah. I, I've had shows but, where... Go ahead. We ha- no, I was just going to say, I guess I we haven't outed you on the podcast yet. Oh, uh, have no. we? Uh, so for con- I, w- I wasn't going to. For context, it's cool. <laughs> yeah, uh, for context of that, if you've ever, I mean, if you've seen his comedy, you most likely know. Uh, ben is one of the gayest people I know. I think super gay. Say. Super. <laughs> <laughs> on the, how do you rank someone on the gay scale, Will? Uh, yeah, because as far as most things go, because, I'm pretty not gay. Uh, because that's true. I, <laughs> that's true. Ben is into heavy metal, right? Yep. He has- I I am a huge fan of So You Think You Can Dance, so I fall somewhere on the You're scale. gayer than Ben. I just <laughs> like when they face plant or, like, mess themselves up. That's the only entertaining part of the whole show. <laughs> uh yeah yeah i i but i did i i used that so bad trying to get in to do shows starting comedy like it was all about the gay thing and i it was an easy thing to play it was an easy card and sure and no most people i would walk into a bar and no one would think it and then i'd get on stage and talk about how i like to suck dick and everyone was (laughs) they loved it you you do have a very lemmy look about you right now like it is very motorhead that is his look though he always looks like that yeah but you know what you know lemmy right nope i don't know let me kill meister is that his last name i think so is that right lemmy for motorhead yeah is that his last name? I don't I know. know. I don't Lemmy know. from Motorhead. I just, I just know he looks like you. Right? And the hair. It's the beard. It, maybe it's the Because yeah. I would hope I don't have, like, the same drug face. Well, you're certainly not as grizzled. <laughs> like, Lemmy is, like, if you, if Ben, like, if you oh, got yeah, grizzled yeah, for 40 yeah. years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. See, I was thinking the, uh, uh, like, uh, the lead singer of Nickelback. I'll go with Lemmy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we won't. No Chad Kroger today. Uh, Can I, they canceled another show in Omaha. Or, I saw or, that on Facebook. Good for uh, them. Apparently, Chad Kroger had to, has to get like some kind of surgery on his vocal cords. Well, so I think it's a sign. He'll well, be what, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Th- okay. This is an earnest question, though. Like. Because everybody makes fun of and hates Nickelback. How is Nickelback the most popular band literally in the world when no one likes them? Because no one likes them. I, I almost think that just as much bad can do good for you. Pop- popularity <laughs> means a lot of things. Everyone well, knows their name. If but Because like, what you're hearing is that 90% of the people hate Nickelback. But if 10% of the people like Nickelback, that's way higher percentage than like any other band right do you know what i mean because a hundred percent of the people know nickelback right yeah and like so so you're you're gonna hear mostly negative opinion i feel like it's like you can win a presidential election with 30 percent popularity or whatever if there are five candidates i feel like people um that talk a lot about how much they hate nickelback kind of listen to nickelback (laughs) you know what i mean (laughs) okay here's here's my dirty the classic music homophobia right i listened to the first two albums of nickelback and okay the third one was i think the one that got him famous oh now i know things about nickelback and uh i drew a line somewhere (laughs) (laughs) and i haven't listened to him since then don't we all have a music shame though like glee Oh, okay. See, See so you think you could dance us out, but <laughs> Glee is my dirty. Party. My shame band is Train. I really fucking like Train. Why is that a shame band? I don't know. People hate it. Every like lots of people hate Train. I feel more people don't know them. I anymore. feel like they're just bland. Wasn't that Drops of Jupiter? Yeah, yeah. It's just great song. <laughs> it's, it's pop. Hey, soul sister. 
Mary oh, yeah. me. You ever I, heard that song? I don't know what that is. Oh. Is that that's Train? A, that's like their newer song. Oh. They have new stuff? Uh, yes. <laughs> We're informing the people. Meet Virginia. Oh, was that them? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Great song, man. Look at all these hits. I I really like they're Train. Talent, they're talented musicians. They perform live well. Like a lot of bands. Have you seen them live? Uh, on t- like t- oh, okay, on the screen right, right, live. Right. So live you, performance. To when, when does this go on? Oh, when are the, we posting uh, this? Yeah, when are you posting? Thursday morning. Thursday morning. So I can't do a shameless plug at all. Uh, <laughs> about we're, tonight. We're, oh, <laughs> tonight. No, no, no. We go for next Tuesday. Yeah, but we. We'll, but we'll, in general. Yeah. Tuesday yeah. Every Tuesday night. libation. Sundays at Here, the let's, lookout lounge. Let's, get, let's do it. Let's do plugs now. It's your plug. Oh wow! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now you go. Yeah, that's all right. It's Sunday right. nights at the Lookout Lounge, and we come back this Sunday because we've had kind of a hi- hiatus in Omaha. The Lookout Lounge is right around 72nd and Dodge, and that's Sunday nights. What time does it get going? Gets t- going about 10. Sign up at 9.30. Is. The revamped Lookout Lounge is pretty fucking sweet now. Uh, I enjoy I, it. So go there Sunday nights and check out Shoot Your Mouth Off. We have Jocelyn Muhammad on, on Sunday, and that's our Pride Party. Our cool. Heartland Pride Party, because we didn't do it this week. We hosted all weekend though for Heartline Pride. Oh, t- well, tell us about that. It was fun. You Did know, they do the pissed this, off a drag queen? Was this weekend the parade? Yeah, yeah. Saturday was the parade and the festival, and then Youth Pride was on Friday, and we did that too. I've marched in that before. My wife used to play roller derby, and so they always oh. they always did a thing for. I the thought pride the next parade. word out of your mouth was going to be softball. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> and then you like converted her. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pissed Very- off a drag queen. For you show. think you tell the comedians or tell a comedian or a band that they they're not going to go on for another twenty minutes? It's bad. <laughs> and they're you, like, oh, I just can't handle the system. <laughs> <laughs> anything else you want to plug or talk about? Anything else you have coming up? We have a uh, prom coming up June ninth, July nineteenth, and July twenty sixth is a hip hop showcase. There's no comedy going on right now, but <laughs> right. we have Kent uh, we, next we, Tuesday. Kent we, we Maslowski. Is what? Hmm? Sh- shoot your mouth off. Shoot your mouth off. Oh, okay, cool. And that's the one in Omaha. In Omaha, okay. we have Kent awesome. Mazlaski and the one in Lincoln here awesome. uh, next Tuesday. So then we, yeah, I tried. I'm trying the, to get all friend of, them. of the show, Kent Mazlaski. I, I always introduce him as if you are you ready to get a little dark. <laughs> all right, cool. <laughs> him and a collection of you guys. <laughs> Very cool. All right, so go check out Shoot Your Mouth Off Tuesday nights in Lincoln, Sunday nights in Omaha. Let's uh, let's do some news. Joshua. 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 Bossler. News. Hello, everybody. You're not hot. You're not going to be hoppy about this story unless you love boobs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hop- <laughs> Damn. Hoppy beer. Hoppy beers contain a plant estrogen that may cause feminine attributes in men, including man boobs. This is hitting very close to home, but please continue. Right. It's one of the reasons I picked it. <laughs> Hop- <laughs> Hops are female flowers of the hop plant that contain serious amounts of phytoestrogen, a plant estrogen that women have used as an herbal medicine. Women have been known to take hops to ease uh, menopause and boost milk production, among other things. Now, uh, another peek behind the proverbial curtain. Right before you started reading the story, I just opened <laughs> yeah. a Weyerbacher double Simcoe double IPA, one of the hoppiest beverages you can buy. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, Indian pale ale is heavy on hops, and craft brewers use 400 to 500 percent more hops than the typical big name beer. Opponents to the theory say that the man boobs are more the result of hot of the high number of calories commonly found in hoppy beer, and the hop uh, content in a five gallon batch of beer, let alone a single beer, is infinitesimal. I am certainly guilty of uh, overstimulating my man boobs calorically. I'm hoping that's it because I love hoppy beer. It's kind of my thing. So is suing them completely out of the question? Then? Like, <laughs> Ooh. For the man Whoa. boobs. Like, uh, <laughs> I, I feel a, uh, what's it called? Uh, a Gy- a gynecomastia? Class action oh, lawsuit. Yeah. That's not where he was going. Uh, <laughs> 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 No, I'm saying we could all get a taste of the boobs. I mean pie. I mean money. <laughs> <laughs> we all got the boobs. All very <laughs> boob, yeah, confusing. I mean, yeah. I mean, for sure I've got man boobs. 
here's the thing. Even if that story were proved to be totally true, I would probably still keep drinking super hoppy beers and just deal with... Start wearing a bra. Yeah. Yeah. The bro. Yeah. Because I love... Because I love hoppy beer and i am indifferent to the shape of my own body <laughs> <laughs> so you know the, the, as will said in his comedy when you're married you can give up right didn't you say that I'm so or was that jimmy <laughs> <laughs> when you're married i have you also said up. that in my comedy <laughs> so I'm uh, i don't know why i gave up already <laughs> <laughs> marriage inequality is but, why well i it was it was it was almost a year into my diet before i found out that there's low carb beer like i went a whole year without drinking any beer and then i found Michelob ultra and i was like what is this i was there when you discovered it (laughs) it it was i mean like it wasn't just like a child on christmas that child is only mildly happy you were elated get this (laughs) it was it, it was the child on christmas the first year the Super Nintendo came. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Get this. I found a, a Michelob Ultra Amber, right? Ooh. Low carb, little darker beer. Mm-hmm. And it's it's only like less than one carb more than the regular Michelob Ultra, you know? Right. You know, guys? Awesome. You know. No. <laughs> I, don't know. I obviously don't know. I, I, your numbers, it makes me feel morbidly obese when you talk about the numbers you've lost and the ones you still want to. I think I've lost 87 and I want to lose 60 more. But you're also a tall guy. 60 seems like People a lot. People say that a lot. <laughs> How tall are you? 6'3". Oh, you seem taller. You carry Almost yourself high. I don't maybe. know. Maybe. I don't know. All right. I was 400 pounds. Were you really? <laughs> At one time. Jesus Christ. That's a lot. Yeah. How did you lose it? Uh, Michelob Ultra. No. <laughs> <laughs> Pure Michelob Ultra diet. It was, it was the, the, you know, that's gross. Like fruit in the morning and then chicken and veggies throughout your day. Oh, like just really oh, dieting, gross. man. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, it's misery. Now, but... you're, you're a young guy. Like, when were you 400 pounds? Was that like in high school? No, I was like 24. Oh, okay. 25. And then I was a little lower and then, yeah. Wow. So you loaded it all on like right after high school? Yeah, I went, I went from seven, like eighth grade. I was like six foot one. And 120 pounds. And oh, then okay. my ninth grade year, I was 280 pounds and like okay. six foot two. Like, right. It was just, I don't know. Pizza Is there Hut some... and Final Fantasy. Are we digging into some dark stuff oh, here? Oh, you mean can... my present. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dorothy he makes you sad. <laughs> <laughs> right. Josh, you got another one? Sure. A uh, a customer scanned the R, uh, the QR code on a bottle of Heinz ketchup to take part in the company's design your own label contest. Uh, the website that came up, a hardcore porn website. The explanation turned out to be a simple one. The contest expired in 2014, and Heinz didn't bother to hang on to the domain name. <laughs> <laughs> and so, like, subsequently, a porn company then snatched it up. <laughs> oh, what? Uh, he what? went there. <laughs> Boom. Uh, so, so Heinz Ketchup had an encoded link to a hardcore porn website on their ketchup bottle, unbeknownst to them, essentially, is what was happening. Right. That is fantastic. That is some serious Fight Club shit. Like, that is some subliminal message, let's take down the big corporations, <laughs> only they did it to themselves. <laughs> right, and I feel like if the, I don't know anything about the porn company... Wink. I, uh, <laughs> it'd be cool. It'd be funny. It'd be perfect if it was like a ketchup fetish, like foodie or like, you know what I mean? Just like people well, that are into food stuff. Well, it had to have been something with their name in it, right? Like it had to, I mean, the wet, the domain name had to have like Heinz or ketchup in the name. Or were they just being that much of assholes? Like, I, I you know what? I don't know. I do well, not know. check your you, facts. Sorry, <laughs> I can only because I think it's I think because I think it's in depth. I think it's funny that some porn company is out there fishing for defunct like famous like brand names and buying up their websites and throwing up some porn. Like, and, and, that, what that implies to me is that this is this is a uh, the course that internet porn is taking, and it's not going to stop. Until 20 years from now, when dudes are sitting around being like, where do you go for your porn? Oh, dude, I go to Budweiser.com, man. They got the 
that's all the oh. interracial stuff. Like, where do you go? Oh, man, I Nebraska.gov, dude. It's fucking hardcore over there. <laughs> there the, porn companies have been doing this for years. When I was in high school a decade ago, it was this huge, like, viral thing that everybody thought was hilarious because a porn company owned whitehouse.com oh i remember that and that i like, remember that and i remember no i remember because i remember like seeing that when i was in high school and i remember the white house didn't get that domain because i saw it on the news like two years ago when they finally got it right. out from under the porn just well, just recently <laughs> Car carly forina she's the woman uh, republican candidate mm -hmm. she uh they didn't secure any domain names before she decided to run and and uh and a whole bunch of porn sites ended up buying them up Wait, they have uh, like four yeah. arena 2016 didn't what, taylor swift just go through this too she yeah something there, i thought i saw something yeah. about taylor swift like she had she had a like somebody bought one of her like taylor swift.tv and turned that into a porn the name of the porn company that <laughs> oh, uh, bought this don uh, heinz is uh this donut main name was uh, Fundorado. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's very close to my wife's roller derby name, which was Fundabang. <laughs> uh, my wife used to play roller derby. For anyone who doesn't, for anyone who doesn't listen to the show regularly, uh, she played roller derby. I don't know, four or five years ago, and they pick like nicknames for themselves or crazy names, and uh, she picked that name because we used to go to the. We have a gym membership, and there was this lady who would always show up to the gym just dressed straight up like a stripper and would just work out in that with, like, a super fake tan. And Every that's why you went to that gym. E everything but heels, <laughs> and, we used to, and we used to call her fun to fuck. We, I mean, we didn't know her or whatever, but we were like, she's just advertising to everyone that she is fun to fuck. And uh, so then when my wife started playing roller derby, she called her, she picked Fundabang as her name, which I still think is brilliant. Yeah, but she pronounced it with an umlaut over the U to give it a little bit Fundabang. of... Fundabang! <laughs> Fundabang! <laughs> right? You that's, have to give it a little air of mystery. That's what she said when there were kids around. She's like, no, it's Fundabang. It means <laughs> great warrior or whatever. Right. <laughs> yeah. So is the general consensus about that whole article is that we were all kind of relieved when you check your Heinz and it's porn and then when it's white I, I, like, You oh, know okay, what? Good. The article made it sound like one guy found it. Because, like, who checks QR codes? Does anybody... Oh, right, yeah. No, you know yeah. What I mean? It was this one guy yeah. that was like, <laughs> I'm going to create a new logo for Heinz. <laughs> the one guy. What's, what's so magical about this, though, is that, like, I love that, like, porn isn't profitable enough by just being porn that exists. Porn has to surprise you. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. like it's a game of peek The only way that porn, like, we've got to just figure out how to get our, uh, how we just need to get some eyeballs on our porn. Yeah. <laughs> Where can we go that people are just going to be all of a sudden like, well, I guess now I'm watching do, porn. Well, in about three <laughs> months, when the domain name thejimmycurve.com expires... <laughs> You can go there for all your hardcore porn needs. And it turns I out hope. that title just works in porn. <laughs> right. I'll just change it to something like Broke Straight Boys or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, it's kind of the same thing. Oh, it's good. Yeah, that works. That works. Oh, we never asked Ben where he was on the Jimmy Curve. Uh, are you familiar with the Jimmy Curve graph? Uh-uh. Okay, the Jimmy Curve is a graph I came up with. It's a bell curve uh, that uh, I use to measure quality of life. It has intelligence on the x-axis and having your shit together on the y-axis. The idea is that if you're real dumb and you don't have your shit together at all, the smarter and smarter you get, the more you have your shit together. But at a certain point, you start getting too smart. And that's when you start losing your keys and you can never remember where you parked and you're always late to everything. And like the smartest people that you know, their life is just as fucked up as the dumbest people. So where mm. would you put yourself on the Jimmy curve? Well, do you buy the premise? Yeah. Do you buy the premise? Does do it make you, sense? Do you premise? accept it, it, the veracity? It does make sense. Yeah. It, it, he gave me the squinty eyes, but he's going along with it. I, I, I'm buying it. I don't know where I fall. I, I feel a weird. I am at the very peak of the Jimmy Curve, aka the sweet spot or the nipple. Will is like snow skiing down the far side towards like <laughs> smart fucked up territory. Uh, 
Josh is in like a suburb of the of the sweet spot. I'm not sure if I buy the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> now he's backing out. <laughs> Josh is what we call a skeptic. The more and more I hear Jimmy explain it, the less I'm. <laughs> But that's a very reasonable response. <laughs> ben, what do you think? Where are you at? Hmm. I think I must have been passing up well a long time ago. <laughs> that's how I feel. <laughs> you guys are just doing one of those like two man somersaults where you hold each other's ankles and roll down the. <laughs> I just moved into my mom's house. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's so, not a good sign. That's, that's not a good sign. End. All right, let's do one more news story. Okay. Uh, what do we want to? We want to talk about Texas, or I'll say a new college. Study of study in college, something you can study in college. I, I leave for Texas tomorrow, or Texas. Yeah, there's, there's... Uh, Texas. Ben, you're, Ben is leaving for Texas tomorrow for a week. What are you doing in Texas? My best friend's getting married. Awesome. Let's Always do a story a bride about Texas. Made never a bride. <laughs> so Texas is being so... extra Texany. Okay. Uh, it, it does that. Texas now allows gay divorce, but still uh, outlaws gay marriage. <laughs> <laughs> A, uh, a... That's that is maybe the most Texas thing ever. <laughs> that's that's messing up my entire like what happened first, the chicken or the egg. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. How is it even Everything's possible? Everything's going crazy. In my head. <laughs> well, basically, the te Texas Supreme Court it got to the Supreme Court where this couple wanted to get divorced. Their marriage wasn't recognized in Texas, but it wasn't in another state. And Texas was like, can we, you know, break up this marriage in Texas? Like, can we do that? And so it's... Texas did the thing that Texas was meant to do, which is, we go undo Iowa. <laughs> right. We go, undo, we go undo the sin that Iowa did. Right. So, um, and they that's what they ended up wow. doing. Um, Texas built a gay time machine. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to undo that sense? Yes. Or as it's colloquially known, a hot tub time machine. <laughs> hot tub time machine. <laughs> well, hell, we got to undo this. They they so like they they are so not into gay marriage that that you can get a divorce in Texas and gay marriage. Like that's how much they don't you can't want get, they, yeah, wow. that's right. My wife has family that lives in uh Texarkana, which is like all the worst parts of Texas, Arkansas, and Louisiana, but, like, all in one city. Uh, and the place where her uh, aunt and uncle live is a dry county. Now, I did not, I legitimately did not know that dry counties still exist today. You know, what is a dry county? Like, no booze? There like is no booze allowed at all in the city that they live in. How can you... I, I mean, maybe this is me making the assumptions here, but how can you be all of the worst things about Texas, Louisiana, and Arkansas while sober? You're right. <laughs> like, yeah. that's unbelievable to me, because somehow I can intellectualize some, like, southern racism, like, because I'm like, yeah, that's just some drunk piece of shit. Like, I don't that's know, what's like, in my head. Oh, man. Like, I'm, okay, I'm from Kansas. Which is in many ways a truly awful place. <laughs> I live in Nebraska. Huh. <laughs> Texarkana is the worst place I've ever been. The I went I once walked around Caracas, Venezuela as a 14-year-old unsupervised for an hour. Texarkana is the worst place I've ever been. <laughs> it is a horrible wow. place. I lived on the border of western Nebraska and Wyoming, and I feel that's pretty comparable, but... That's like living on the moon. Like, there's just nothing, <laughs> there's a vacuum there of... It's just the, the police wake up every day and they're like, we're going to catch them people bringing marijuana <laughs> over the border. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's all that there is doing. there. It's like a one <laughs> There is nothing trip. else to do. <laughs> there is nothing yes. else to do. Uh, yeah, let's do but one more. But you can drink there, so... You <laughs> see? Yeah, right! It's not the worst place on the planet! <laughs> it is that best. Fucking uh, Texarkana, You man. will soon be able to get a Bachelor's of Fine Arts in Comedic Arts at uh, Emerson <laughs> College of Boston. Um, well... Which is pretty pretty big deal. Hello, future plans, everyone I know. They plan on having uh, guest lecturers such as Jay Leno, Dennis Leary, Bill Murray, Henry Winkler, and such. 
Um, wow. Yeah, you know, all those important comedic voices like Henry Winkler. <laughs> <laughs> hey! Like, what? Uh, officials deci- uh, uh, decided to introduce the four-year program, which begins in the fall of 2016 after offering a minor program in comedy last fall. So it's not totally foreign to them. I think and comedians well, no, like, can only charge for so like comedians having like a room in some building where they teach people how to be comedians like the every other form of anything that eventually turns into schooling starts right. like, like you can only do that for so long before the schools are like okay we're going to do it. I mean <laughs> <laughs> before they're going to realize that there's some sweet money to be made <laughs> off of idiots with dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Getting a college degree in any fine art, to me, I think is kind of weird. Yeah, it's I, 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 that's what I was about to say. This is no different than anything else in college. But if you if you are going to have a fine arts college, um, have the things like acting and things like this and painting and stuff like yeah. that, you should have comedy. I mean, that's part of it. I have two college degrees. I have a college degree in creative writing right. and a college degree in theater and film. Right. That is useless. Right. That is double useless. Right. Like, why getting a degree in comedy is no different. Than useless. Th- no different than that. Yeah, it's the same. <laughs> really, you should, even if you want to be an artist, you should study business or marketing so you are better equipped to make money off For of doing sure. art. For sure. No question. The main way you'll ever be good at comedy is doing it. Over and over and over and over. And marketing yourself well. Yeah, and marketing well, it's, it's something, too, being that's good easily it, self-study. Yeah. You know what you like. You know what's funny. Like, just by watching it, you learn. Well, same thing. Like, most famous writers didn't get college degrees in writing. Like, right. Well, what happened, I think, is one of the reasons why they're doing this is, like, in order to get a job on Saturday Night Live now... Uh, as a writer or work for the late show is those like uh you know they're from Harvard yeah right. there's yeah yeah so many over overed- like Simpsons and Futurama writers so many of them came from the Harvard lampoon right. right how many of these shows are just not as good as they were when they didn't do that <laughs> <laughs> i would say saturday night well, live for sure was definitely yeah. better but it was also a strong well, well, was but it but that was true that. that was true of a lot of the original simpsons writers like for the first seven seasons were a lot of those guys too oh really so yeah. okay and if I, you if you want to go in depth about the simpsons writers i'll tell you my opinions about each so show runner per season i also challenge the notion oh, wow. that saturday night live is worse than it used to be i i think that's a, an entire I think that's a misperception. I think, All right. I think pe- I think I think when people say Saturday Night Live used to be better, what they're remembering are the three or four sketches they thought were really funny from like a five year period, and like there are still a couple of sketches every year that are super fucking funny. It's just the nature of sketch comedy. Most like, you're forgetting all of the shit that was real. They just showed. They just re-aired the very first episode ever of Saturday Night Live. And it is really, really bad. There was one good sketch, and the rest of it is terrible. You know, I think just, it's I think it's like a strong uh, cast is right. a thing. Like now, you have like one or two shining people that are that are like really good at what they do. Yeah, and you have a bunch of fillers. And back then, you had like a couple fillers, but I felt like there was such a strong cast in the nineties. But, but I, I mean, I think. We're going but, yeah, but you're, but you're forgetting the Rob Schneiders of the world. I mean, there was right. always well, that was a post lot. that well, well, making <laughs> copy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe you're not. Maybe Josh was like remembering yeah. Rob Schneider and loving him. But, <laughs> but it is. But it is also like Chris Kattan. Yeah, it is uh, also uh. like every every <laughs> era is nostalgic for the time period when they were watching the show the most. And when it was the most relevant to them. So during the 90s, there were people going, look, what is this fucking Adam Sandler garbage? We had Bill Murray. Right. And now there's people going, fucking what happened to add the brilliant greats like Adam Sandler? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Well, there was there was one sweet spot. Where it was like, it was, yeah. it was, people prove are, my point, Jimmy. Well, people are, <laughs> I think people take 11 years and cram them together. Cause there was like two years where the cast involved Dana Carvey, Mike Myers, Kevin Nealon, Tim Meadows, uh, Phil Hartman, uh, Norm McDonald, Norm McDonald, uh, Farley Spade, 
Chris Man. Farley, David Spade. Like, David Spade was the shitty one, like, in that yeah. era. And Rob Schneider was in there for a minute. Uh, but as and the then, shitty like, one, he was okay. And this was back when, like, and then there was, like, <laughs> the end of that was, like, when Will, Will Ferrell was the new guy. But, like, it was really only a, a one or two year sweet spot where all of those people were on the show. Really, like, those people came and went over a long period of time. But I think people remember that group as their favorite. At least people in my generation remember that group as their favorite SNL cast. But I really think that the ca- the, like, the recent SNL casts have been pretty strong. I mean, you know, you've had, like, I think that uh, Bobby Moynihan and fucking, like, Bill Hader are brilliant, you know? Like, they're as good as anyone who's ever been on the show, in my opinion. Oh, and by the way, I think that right now, today, is the strongest female cast SNL has ever had, ever. And I don't think it's remotely close. I think between yeah. Cecily Strong, Kate McKinnon, uh, 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 A.D. Bryant, uh, I can't even remember, uh, uh, uh uh, Jones, Leslie Jones. Which ones are going on the Ghostbusters? Leslie Jones, uh, Kristen Wiig, I believe. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, I think Melissa Mich- McCarthy. Melissa McCarthy, and I think, yeah. and there's a third one or a fourth one. I don't remember. I, I don't recognize any of those names, so I can't contribute to that yeah, conversation. Right, but I do I mean, have one thing I want to say about Saturday Night Live, yeah. which is that I watched. The big, like, anniversary special. What year was it that they just had the big special? Like, 40 years or something? Yeah. yeah. And Saturday Night Live anniversary special. And I watched the whole thing. And it was funny. And there were moments that I enjoyed. But to me, by far, the funniest thing on that entire special was when they put John Lovitz in the In Memoriam section. <laughs> that was funny. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> by far, the, to my favorite No, thing. it was great. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Another one of Josh's favorite Saturday Night Live alumnus. I love. Oh, all right. Well, fuck you guys. John Lovitz. Yeah, he's great. He was great. John Lovitz I always was great. Loved him. I left him out of that cast, but he was in that same group. Yeah, he was, yeah. and he was fantastic. I always liked John Lovitz. Uh, well, uh, in memoriam of John Lovitz, this feels like a good place to wrap it up. Uh, we will remem- remember John Lovitz fondly. May he rest in peace. Do you, uh, Will and Josh, do you guys have anything to plug coming up? Nothing soon. Uh, I've got the Will Doherty Loves Company show this Saturday night at Backline. It's your plug. Head to Backline at 1618 Harney Street in Omaha, Nebraska, Saturday night at what time? 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock to catch Will Doherty Loves Company, a very funny show. Check out uh, Shoot Your Mouth Off at Libations in Lincoln on Tuesday nights and at The Lookout in Omaha on Sunday nights. Uh, ben, where can where else can we follow you on Twitter? I have a Twitter that I've never logged into, but you can find me on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, just go outside and look for someone who looks like Lemmy and yell, "Hey, Ben!" That's how and, you find and Ben. Don't Chad. Don't say Chad Kroger. <laughs> don't say Chad Kroger. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> thanks for having me. <laughs> find find a. Follow the Jimmy Curve on Twitter. Follow Ben McFarland in person. Okay, let's wrap it up for uh, co-host Joshua Vossler. Goodbye, everybody. (laughs) And perennial uh, sidekick Will Doherty. I was trying to think of something to say that John Lovitz would say. (laughs) And our special guest, Ben McFarland. I'm not going to be creative. Thanks for having me. <laughs> I have been... Hey, somebody nominate us for an OEAA. That'd be awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh. We wanted to... We, uh, like not comedy. only do we want to be nominated, we want a whole new category. Best podcast, but or best group comedy. But, yeah, we want there to be a comedy uh, section... But and t- since there won't be, the most efficient way to force them into doing that is by nominating us for Comedy Ensemble. And when everybody's like, this is bullshit, then they'll have to put on a comedy <laughs> podcast section. So nominate us for some bullshit. And thank you for listening. <laughs> I've been your host, Jimmy Putnam. Thank you and good night. <laughs>
Blinded by the light inside It seems as if I've lost my mind Bring the light Who's to blame? I'm the light, I'm the dark I'm the one in between I wanna say I wanna Cause in the end we all will know So you give it It seems as if I've lost my mind Bring the light